Hey everyone, Nick Dearbertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to talk about relaxing the salary assumption in our simple retirement model as part of the depth of a financial model series uh, focusing on building out a more involved Excel model. So uh, we've been working on this basic uh, retirement problem and uh, we talked about how uh, basically we made a lot of assumptions in this original model uh, which made it a very simple calculation but also not very realistic and so we um, can try to relax an assumption to get closer to the real world um, so most of the time you're not able to completely get rid of an assumption uh, you're just going to replace it with an assumption which is closer to how the real world works um, so the one that we're going to look at relaxing here is the salary assumption um, whereas before we said that uh, the salary is just constant it's you know fifty thousand or whatever and that's going to be the salary for the entire life of this individual but of course that's not very realistic um, and so we're going to replace it with something which gets fairly close to reality um, and that's that um, you know we want to work in the idea that people's salary grows over time throughout their career right as they uh, you know get promotions or you know change companies uh, you know they're going to get a raise associated with that most of the time and you know such that at the end of their career they're making substantially more than the beginning of their career and not only that but also uh, typically most companies will give a cost of living raise every year uh, regardless of whether you're getting a promotion or anything else uh, you know, they're just going to give you, you know, a one, two percent, something like that, uh, raise just to account for inflation over time. Um, so we're going to work both of these things into our assumption that, you know, every certain number of years, uh, this individual gets a promotion and they get a raise associated with that, a certain percentage raise. Uh, and then every year they're also getting a certain percentage cost of living raise. Now, um, this is definitely a lot closer to how the real world works, but of course we're not getting all the way there. There's a lot more that we could potentially do with this salary assumption, um, but I think what we have here is already getting you know fairly close such that the results are probably not going to be all that different going to more realistic situations. Of course, to make this more realistic, uh, you know, one key thing to think about would be uh, the business cycle. Uh, you know, where is the economy in any given year? Are we in a recession? Are we in an expansion period? Is it kind of a normal, uh, just baseline kind of year? Um, and you would think that uh, you would be less likely to get a promotion in a recession more likely in an expansion and also uh, you know given that you do get a promotion you would expect it to be uh, a, a larger raise in an expansionary period versus a recession um, and then also with our current assumption we're assuming you know every five years or whatever a fixed interval in between uh, the promotions but in reality that would be uh, more random than that there would be you know sometimes you get a promotion quickly sometimes it's going to take longer uh, but also there's going to be uh, a trend for most people that the promotions are going to come slower the later you get into your career you know as you get higher up on the ladder there are less steps to go and so uh, you get promotions less often so um, you know that would be getting even more realistic building in the the economic um, conditions as well as you know trying to get this trend of less promotions over time and you know giving some randomness to when the promotions are actually going to occur you could also uh, add some randomness to the the level of the raise that you're going to get in a promotion um, so there's a lot that we could do to try and go even further and get even more realistic uh, but you always have to kind of cut it off at some point uh, we talked in the last video we, we would be you know spending weeks and weeks on this model if we tried to 
uh, you know, go after, you know, everything to make it as realistic as possible everywhere. Um, and that's really just not going to be feasible uh, for most models. There just isn't enough time to approximate the real world that closely. And so we just have to find a, a nice balance of we're getting pretty close to the real world uh, and we're not going to need to be any closer for the purposes of the decision that we're making based off the model. So with that, we'll stick with this constant um, cost of living raise growth every year. Every uh, X number of years, we're going to get a promotion and it's going to be uh, a fixed percentage uh, raise with each one of those promotions. So, you know, I mentioned how um, when modeling, you know, you kind of start with the assumptions and then you get the logic and the equations out of that assumption, right? So we just came up with a new assumption here about how the salary should work. And so that brings us then to the equation, which represents that salary over time. Uh, so breaking down this equation here, uh, we can think of it kind of in three parts. So uh, the first part here is um, the initial salary, whatever um, salary you started at uh, at the beginning of your career. And this is ultimately to get you know the salary in any given year. So whatever salary you started from. And then the next part is the, um, the cost of living raise. So it's, you know, one plus whatever the return for cost of living is, you know, one or 2% or whatever uh, the company gives for cost of living raise uh, to the power of however many years uh, you've gotten the raise. So, you know, then just thinking about this part of the equation, um, you're going to start out at your initial salary. And then this is going to be to the power of zero. So you'll just have your initial salary in your zero. Uh, but then coming to one year, um, then you're going to have your initial salary plus, you know, one or times 1.02 if it's a 2% um, cost of living raise. And then that's just going to compound year over year uh, going forward. Uh, so kind of common. Uh, just compound interest kind of logic that went into forming this equation. And then the last part here is the promotion raises. So again, we can think of, uh, you know, the promotions as being an additional return on the salary uh, cumulative um, return here. So, um, you know, just like the cost of living raise part, it's going to be uh, you know, you're getting one plus the promotion return, you know, the, the percentage raise that you get as part of a promotion. And you're going to get that uh, for as many promotions as you've had up until that point. Uh, so uh, we can think of it in these three parts, the initial salary, and then we can call this part the cost of living factor. Uh, and then we can call this part the promotion factor so we can kind of decompose this into three parts that we can think about separately so um, that's an overview of uh you know the the new logic and equations that are going to go into the new model um, and we're going to come back next time to cover some skills that we need to actually implement the new model in excel before we go and implement it in the video after that so thanks for listening and see you next time.